Act two, at Rise of Curtain, it is only a second or two later. The jurors are in the same positions as they were at the end of act one. All right, who did it? What idiot changed his vote? Is that the way to talk about a man's life? Whose life are you talking about? The life of the dead man or the life of a murderer? I wanna know, who? So do I. Excuse me, this was a secret ballot. No one looked while we did it, but now I wanna know. A secret ballot, we agreed on that point, no? If the gentleman wants to remain a secret, what do you mean? There are no secrets in here. I know who it was. Turns to five. What's the matter with you? You come in here and you vote guilty. And then this slick preacher starts to tear your heart out with stories about a poor little kid who just couldn't help becoming a murderer. So you change your vote. That isn't the most sickening. Now hold it. I agree with you that the man is guilty, but let's be fair. Hold it. Be fair. That's just what I'm saying. We're trying to put a guilty man into the chair where he belongs. And all of a sudden, we're paying attention to fairy tales? Now, just a minute. Now, you listen to me. Let's try to keep this organized, gentlemen. It isn't organized, but let's try to be civil. Civilized. Please, I, I would like to say something here. I have always thought that a man was entitled to have unpopular opinions in this country. This is the reason I came here. I wanted to have the right to disagree. Do you disagree with us? Usually I would. In this one case, I agree with you. But the point I wish to make is that in my own country, I am ashamed to say, oh, now, what do we have to listen to? The whole history of your country? It's always wise to bear in mind what has happened in other countries when people aren't allowed to disagree, but we are. So let's stick to the subject. Yeah, let's stick to the subject. I want to ask you, what made you change your vote? I want to know too. You haven't told us yet. Why do you think I did change my vote? Because I do. Now get on with it. There's nothing for him to tell you. He didn't change his vote. I did. I was going to tell you. But you were so sure of yourself. Sorry. Okay, now. Maybe you'd like to know why. Let me tell you why that kid's up. <clears throat> the man wants to talk. Thank you. This gentleman chose not to stand alone against us. That's his right. It takes a great deal of courage to stand alone, even if you believe in something very strongly. He left the verdict up to us. He gambled for support, and I gave it to him. I want to hear more. The vote is 10 to 2. That's fine, the speech is over, let's go on. <clears throat> the door is opened by the guard. The foreman hands the guard the tagged switch knife. The guard goes out and the foreman takes the other switch knife, closes it and puts it in the middle of the table. He sits again. The other jurors will talk on in pantomime as two and four stand by the water cooler. If there was anything in the kid's favor, I'd vote not guilty. I don't see what it is. Neither do I. They're clutching at straws. As guilty as they get. That's the, that's the kid, I suppose. It's that one juror that's holding out, but he'll come around. He's got to, and fundamentally, he's a very reasonable man. I guess so. We haven't come up with one real fact yet to back up a not guilty verdict. It's hard, you know. Yes, it is. And what does guilty beyond a reasonable doubt really mean? What's a reasonable doubt? Exactly. When a life is at stake... What is a reasonable doubt? You've got to have law and order. You've got to draw the line somewhere. If you don't, everyone would start knifing people. Not much doubt there. Two men think so. I wonder why. I really wonder why. You do hear stories about innocent men who have gone to jail or death sometimes. Then years later, things turn up. <clears throat> and then, on the other hand, some killers get turned loose and they go and do it again. They squeeze out some technical technicality. They squeeze on out some technicality and kill again. 